Here we go. Four. Two. Shabbat shalom. You have to say it. Shabbat shalom. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what am I, chop liver over here? Julian, uh, there we go. Uh, Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom. Uh, I, hope you, I hope you can find a seat. I hope you can. <laughs> Um, we'd like to welcome you to Friday night services. We've all had our week. Lots of things happened to us in the week. Let's begin on page 10. And uh, we sing, Yedid Nefesh. We sing about our heart's delight. moving and now we're going to bring the light of Shabbat into the room we're on page two Page 24. 
Once we light the candles and the light of Shabbat has entered into the room, the angels go around to every house in Israel and they say, are the candles lit in that house? And if they aren't, they say, may all the houses of Israel be like this house. And if they are, one of the angels says, may all the houses of Israel be like this one. So as I look behind me, I see those candles lit. We know those angels will come by. They'll say, may all the houses be just like this one here in Beverly Hills. Shalom Aleichem. Shalom Aleichem. So we've come to that time where we've uh, welcomed in Shabbat. Our bodies are starting to vibrate a little bit with song. Brought the light of Shabbat into the room. You know, there still might be some lingering feelings from the week. What happened to you this week? Was it a good one? Was it a difficult, challenging week? Did you go into escrow this week? Get engaged, maybe? Maybe lost a job? You know, it's funny because in one week there can be highs and lows, challenges and victories. And then we come here Friday and it's time to kind of look back on your week and say, okay, what was it? What do I want to hold on to a little bit? What do I want to let go of and leave behind? And we enter into Shabbat holding on to and letting go of this past week so that we can start on Sunday or Saturday night fresh and new. And have a whole new set of <laughs> challenges and victories. So let's go through our week for a moment. Reflect upon what happened. Chazorat HaShavua. Review of the week.
on page 20.
We move now to page 34. But uh, if you know this prayer, the Shema prayer, the watchword of our faith, it is a prayer that's said as we close our eyes. So if you'd like to just close your eyes for a moment and just feel yourself, feel your body, feel your heartbeat, feel your breath going in and out of your body. When we sing this prayer of the oneness of God, we really do recall the oneness of everything. Like the, the fabric of the universe. And we think about how we're tied to each other. We're tied to everything that happens in the world. It's all us. And it's all one. And we come together and we sing of that oneness. <laughs> sing of the song that the Israelites sang as they got to the other side of the Sea of Reeds f as a free nation.
Asotet Ashavat Ledorotam Berit Forty-four? Forty-four Veshamru Venei Israel Et Hashabat Asotet Ashavat central part of our service, which are our, our own personal, private prayers. It's almost like we've been coming together as a community, welcoming Shabbat, getting our bodies going, thinking about our week, entering into our prayers, thinking about the oneness of everything, and now we say, okay, who are we, and where are we right now? So uh, we're on page 46. We'll sing together that uh, we may have the words in our heart to express our feelings, and we'll rise and do the first line, and then we'll go quiet, and when you're all seated... We'll continue with the service. Please rise in body or spirit.
As we uh, were entering in, into our own personal prayers, it may have been that you were thinking about somebody or people that you love that are in need of healing. So we're going to end our Amidah with a prayer for all of those who are in need, whether it be a physical ailment or a mental illness or emotional trauma. There could be so many reasons why we're worried about the people we love. So on page 253, you'll find the words to this prayer that are also on the screen. We'll sing through the first part, which says, I hope that we have the courage and the strength to be with those people we care about. And then we'll, uh, the cantor will come into the, uh, the hordes of people in the congregation, and we'll get names from you, the people that you're thinking about. And uh, I have a list here that I can read, and we'll go online also, and we'll check and see if people have put uh, names in the chat, so you can start doing that now. Me. Chaim Berg, Jean-Claude Berthe, Shirley Block, Shalom Bluestein, Bernard Birnbaum, Lester Boxer, Leo, Leo Carlin, and Eitan Chaim, Woody Clark, Joseph Cohen, Tamara Deverell, Patty Goodman, Andy Hale, Helene Hale, Lori Haynes, Dora Kamara, Sis Klein, Russell Kunke, Ira Laufer, Geffen Lombardo, Marissa Batyakov, Ruven Verifka Adina, Daniel Papp, Ariel Pepper, Merle Prop, Rachel Batchana Vachaim, Chaya Rachel Batkarmi Adina, Harav Aharona Bat Sfia Veyosef, Bud Reinfeld, Warren Rostin, Ruth Schwartz, Leonard Shapiro, Rhoda Sharp, Lindy Sobel, and David Stein, Paul Vilek, Paula Warner, Sonia Ann Weggy, and Theodore. Students and staff of Luis Munoz Rivera Middle School, Bob Berger, Solomon Vas Diaz, Shep Wanon, Marilyn Marcus, Mindy Ruchel Bot Razel, Haya Rifka Bot Ruth, Lee Lawson, Jim Vujas, and Charles Rosenberg, Adisa Bot Sarah, Prudencia Ben Sarah, Rosa Bot Sarah, Myra Bot Sarah, and Irene Bot Eloisa, Jed Yocom, Nina Saban, David Yaffe, Shlomo Yaffe, 
Sherman Stein, Pat Zimmer, and Sydney Katz, Darren, David, Barry Levy, Catherine Russell, Joe and Maria Davis, Ryan LeBanc, Rhoda Passavoy, Mindy Kanaski, Alana Tauber, Michael Cromiers, Aria Ben Malka, Cindy Maddox, Andy and Helene Hale, the mother of Johanan Juan or Orozco, Lois Lebman, Rita Newman, Audrey and Judith Venice, Lupe Diaz, Marguerite Diaz, Hazel Sequenza, Dina Hugh, Lila Birkin, and the Barbie family, David Kunkel, Thomas Kai, and Karen Alexander, Conalea Bot Hayasora, Hayasora Bot, Rachalea, Bill Young, Mordechai Ben Morde Mordechai Ben Miriam, Malka Bot Rujo, Stephanie M. Gilbert, and Esti Rodriguez. That list gets longer and longer. And we take all those names into our hearts. And we sing on behalf of all those names. Shabbat Shalom. Whenever my, uh, my nephew is over my house, when it comes time or close for them to, uh, to leave, there was an announcement made, final minute. Now that final minute can last anywhere between five minutes and two hours, right? But you get that final minute and it's like, okay, we're getting ready to leave. I think time hasn't really sunk in for him. He's about three years old, and I don't think he's ready to really start thinking about time. But when, you know, it, it always gets me thinking how strange time is. Kohelet said that life is a, uh, is chevel, which is a mist. Like, you know, you can see a mist, but when you go to grab it, it's not there. I think time is a little bit like that. Time isn't seen. Right? I mean, you can look at your watch and look at the hands of the clock go by, but what are you doing is you're just indicating and measuring that time is passing. It's a dimension of the world that I really, I really, I'm not sure if I'm ever going to be able to truly understand it. And I got this wonderful blah, um, email um, from Rabbi Dr. Lawrence Hoffman, who is a professor of liturgy, or was a professor of liturgy at Hebrew Union College in New York City, he puts out a blog every once in a while, fascinating guy, and he writes about how we, how we always put time and space together, you know? You, you've heard the phrase, right? Time and space. And you also hear the phrase here and now. We're in the here and now. Well, the here is not time, but place. Now is the time. So he writes this, quote, we think of different points in space as coexisting. I live in New York. I'm talking, about, he, he lives in New York, but right, I'm his voice now. I live in New York, but when I visit Toronto, say, New York doesn't vanish, right? It's still out there. With a tall enough body and long enough legs, I could straddle 
above the earth, and I could look down and I could see both Toronto and New York existing at the same time. Time, in contrast, seems more like a video passing by us, frame by frame, and then disappearing forever. Unlike space, time, we think, is not arrayed all around us at exactly the same time, as it were. Time past is memory. Time to come is mystery. I love that. Time past is memory. Time to come is mystery. The very phrase, you know, after death, implies that we cannot be both dead and alive at the same time. When one happens, time continues forward, and that doesn't, we end there. So he asked the question, what if the moments of time do not disappear into the past that has gone by? What if moments of time exist side by side the way places in space do? What if time and space really do coexist in a time-space eternity? I was fascinated by that concept. I started thinking about the way we look at time in our tradition. And it seems like in the Torah and through our tradition that we try to kind of harness time and put time in perspective and try to bring time kind of under our control a little bit in some way. And we do that by marking it. So as we move through time, we also recall and experience the marking of time each year as occurring over and over, so that one might say, you know, every Seder we have happens at exactly the same time, or every Shabbat service that we have is happening. This one is happening now, but last week's is also happening now, and a month ago's service is also happening now, and the first service we ever did at the beginning of the pandemic, sitting in these chairs just like this, we were a little closer together. We didn't realize what it was about that first time. That's happening right now too. So that by continuing to do our rituals each year, we somehow bring time into focus with other times, right? Every week on Friday night to Saturday, we have Shabbat. We're harnessing that time. We, we celebrate and harness the seasons. We've got Sukkot in the fall. We have Hanukkah in the winter. We have Pesach in the spring. We have Shavuot in the, Shavuot in the summer. We mark our years with Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. We mark seven years in our Torah portion. This is where I started thinking about all of this idea of time. We mark seven years in the Torah portion. Every seven years, you let the land grow fallow. And every 50 years... People can return to their homes and they can just kind of go back. So that time 50 years ago and time now, those two things come together. Living as a Jewish person in the world is all about making and marking time and making it count for something about not letting time just kind of get away from you and roll by without you even knowing what's happening. It's for stopping regularly to reflect upon where you are, where you want to be. It's about participating in time as opposed to watching time go by. It's about looking forward and back at the same moment and it's about passing through your life as if it's a cycle that continues to come back upon itself so your life won't pass you by. Shabbat shalom. As we uh, move to conclude our service, we uh, first...
time. Have to announce the Omer, right. This time between Passover and Shavuot, we really pay attention to this time. Um, just to give you an idea of where we are in our uh, counting of the Omer towards Shavuot, this week was the week of Hod. Hod is humility. Hodaya is gratitude. And this is a week where we cultivate um, the, our, our humility, our expression of gratitude all week as we filter it through all the, different, uh, all the different ways that we think about our lives. And so, um, what date is it today? Is it the 20th? Yeah. Ah, okay. So we're going to count the Omer. First we'll do the blessing together, and then we will count this day. The blessing is up on the screen for you. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Kedishanu B'mitzvotav Vitzivanu Al Sfirat HaOmer Praise are you Adonai who makes us holy through mitzvot and commands us to count the Omer. Hayom Chamisha Ushloshim Yom Shehem Chamisha Shvuot La Omer Today is the 30 is 35 days which are 5 weeks of the Omer. Let's move to our concluding prayers now. Page 282, Aleinu. Please rise in body or spirit. Aleinu le shabeach la dohun hakol, la teit gidula le otzer breishit, shehun no teshamayim ve yosir ha'aretz, umoshav yikar o mashamayim imaal, ushkin natuzo begove meromim, u Eloheinu einon, vanachnu korim, Mishtachavim <laughs> You may be seated. Uh, we're going to continue now on page 294 with Kaddish Yatom, the Mourner's Kaddish. And I'd like to ask if there is anyone here, if you're online, if you'd like to write in the names of your family members that you are observing either a yard site for or observing Shloshim or the first year of a death. After, the love, after a loved one, if there is anyone in the room that would like to say the name of their loved one who, if you're commemorating a yard site or 30 days after the death of a loved one, or in the first year of mourning. Please tell us who you're here to say Kaddish for. My father, Clement Franco. My grandmother, Marion Himes. If you look on the screen, you can see the names of those members from our congregation who have died at this season in years past. But we recall for Shloshin, the family of Rosalie Geller, who was, of course, uh, Rabbi Geller's mother. And we also remember the art sites of Adam Goldstein and Irving Krieger. If there are any names online. Mary Mattel Shechet Paikal, Eric Gross, Arnold Hauser, Miriam Metzger, The Innocent Lives of Those Lost in Buffalo, Rabbi Steve Gary Sager, Yetta Galoob, Toby Isaacson, John Gare Lavion. 
So we turn to page 294, if you'd please rise. We remember all of those names called. Esther and Maurice. We also remember all of those lost in the Holocaust. We remember those that have no one to say Kaddish for them. We remember all of those now over a million that have died from COVID-19. And we remember all those that have died in the violence of recent times. Kaddish Yatom. Yitkadal v'yitkadash shemei rabba. Be'elma divra chirutei v'yam lichmal chutei. V'chai echon v'yom echon v'chai e d'chol b'et Yisrael. Ba'galau v'zman kariv v'imru. Amen. Yehei shemei rabba mevarach le'olam ulon me'al maya. Yitparach v'yishtabach v'yitpa'ar v'yitromam v'yitnase. V'yithadar v'yitale v'yithalar shemei d'kudusha b'richu. Le'ela min kol b'archata v'shirata. Tush pachata v'nechemata, dam iran v'yalma v'imru, amen. Yehei shlama rabba min shamaya, v'chaim aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru, amen. Ose shalom b'mromav, hu yase shalom, aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'al kol yoshvei tevel, v'imru, amen. May the one who creates harmony on high bring peace to us, to all Israel, but really to the whole world, and let us say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Cantor, you're in charge of announcements. Apparently that is my definite new That's job. That's your new job. That's for sure. Um, tomorrow morning, please join Rabbi Aaron here in the sanctuary for Shabbat morning at Emmanuel. Or if you have um, family with young children or young children, please come to Shabbat in the park with me and with Ian Simpson. There it is. There it is. Uh, he looks really like he I loves know, he, singing. He does love singing. Doesn't he? Uh, we're focusing <laughs> on the Torah because we're uh, just two weeks out from Shavuot. Yep. Which we need to make an announcement about that. Um, but there that you go. Like Tomorrow Netza. morning you can park in the free lots on either side of the park there on uh, the Beverly Cannon Garden. So please join us for that. Next Friday night we have. Whoa. Look how exciting that. I hope it's as exciting as that picture looks. Because I think it's really exciting. Um, Shabbat Spark and an outside barbecue. You need to RSVP. Yes. Jenny says that our community does not RSVP fast enough. So please RSVP. <laughs> and Matt is, yes, Matt is shaking his head. If you can RSVP so we order enough food. Um, actually, it's free, um, if you RS free for members if you RSVP before May 23rd which is uh, Monday, I After guess. After that, it's like 180 bucks. After that, bucks. it's 100, no, $18 or 36 if you're not a member. Uh, um, but if you're interested in being a member, come talk to us. Sure. Um, but anyways, 515 outside for hopefully a, a COVID-safe barbecue. And then the service in here with our soul singers and our junior cantors. And, and? Um, our farewell to Rabbi Adam Lutz, a special presentation and... Um, special blessings for all of our teens going to college. I think we should have a little competition, like what is being said by each one of the people on in this picture. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> on the right. Oh. <laughs> you mean the bald guy? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, I think there's one more. Oh. Ooh, think about it Thursday. Oh, what are we thinking about? We're, we're thinking about what we should not talk about. That's right. We're going to talk about gossip. Yep. It's I think, very... Lita, you might want to be there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rabbi Aaron and I always have fun talking to each other. About gossip. About gossip. We do not gossip, but we like talking about yes. gossip. We like examining situations. Exactly. Say, or prefacing anything but by this might be gossip. <laughs> right. But then we try not to do that. Exactly. So um, next Thursday online at 7 p.m., join us uh, and we'll have some fun. Yeah. Uh, and There's we one have more. A simcha. One more what? This. Oh, Eric Fram. Let look. us give a golf clap to Eric Fram, who's Eric graduated. Eric Fram graduated law school. It was just four years ago when he graduated UCLA. He looks like he's about 16 years old in that picture. That is a lawyer. Yeah. 
That's a yep, winner. and he's uh, just congratulations, Eric. Does he We're have very a proud law specialty? Do you know? Did he major? Uh, he wants to go into entertainment law. I know that. Er anyone? Uh, so <laughs> any connections give him a job? here in LA? Uh, no, Eric uh, has grown up at the synagogue, and we're very proud of you, Eric, and has sang for many years, so mazel tov. Uh, and we have a sim, oh, no, that was our simcha. <laughs> Submit your simcha, is what I was going to say. If you have one, send it in. New babies, anniversaries, new jobs. Uh, Rabbi Aaron, thank you for being our accompanist tonight. You're welcome. We missed the uh, pandemic times when Rabbi Aaron had to play every single uh, week. Uh, so we had to bring it's that true. back because there's a surge right now. So when there's a surge, it's only you. That's exactly. <laughs> and thank you, Julian. And thank you. Uh, I don't know, Matt. Did you greet? I think Amanda. Amanda, Amanda for you, greeting Amanda. and Robert, Robert. and uh, Adrian and maintenance and Kelly and Jenny and everybody who works at Temple Emanuel. Thank you. What are we ending with? Oh. oh. <laughs> Please RSVP for Shabbat Spark, like, tonight. Thank Words you. Words are up on the screen. They're not <laughs> in the sea door. Ve'ha'ikar, ve'ha'ikar, lo'lefached klal. Ve'ha'ikar, ve'ha'ikar, lo'lefached klal. You're blessed as you came into this house. May you be blessed as you go forward. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.